Hello and welcome back to another Skull Rules video. This time I'm going to be going through the tutorial and telling you what it's asking of you and maybe some tips and tricks on how to beat it. Because there's a lot of people I've heard, well not like a lot, but enough people that say that this tutorial is too hard or that they can't seem to finish it. So I just tried the first two to just remember what the terms, terminologies and everything is in this game. I haven't done the first three chapters of the tutorial, I think basically since the game came out. So let's see how it goes. Let's move around, you know, the easiest thing to do, just move. All fighting games have this tutorial. It might seem a little redundant, but if it's your first fighting game, might be good for you to just see what does one. There's a lot of people that when they start, they are like, is there a jump button? Is there a block button? So on, especially because a lot of Smash players actually come to this game for some reason. And as you can see, my inputs are on screen. I play in a stick class, and if you do not know, I'm going to put it right now. This is back. This is forward. This is down. And this is up. Okay, up. Down. Okay. Let's choose lesson just in case. Most attacks can be defended against blocking. Yeah, you just hold the opposite direction of the opponent. You just hold back. Or if you're on the right side of the screen and this is back, you just point towards your back. There you go. Crouch, block, and mid. Okay. So mids can be blocked standing or crouching. That's fine. High attacks. I'm pretty sure this is jumping or high attacks. Yeah. Like jumping attacks are overheads all the time. Not all the time, actually. There are some exceptions in this game. You can test it if you want. But mostly, all jumping attacks or air attacks are overheads and you cannot block them while crouching. You need to be standing up. And low attacks, you can only block them while crouching. And there are certain special attacks, overheads, that even if you're in the ground, you need to block them standing. You can't block them crouching. That was one of Parasol's overheads. Okay. Basic attacks. No, you know, light, medium, heavy, punch and kick. Most characters have one. It's called the Magic Series. Some have it better than others. It's fine. Okay, jumping attack just in the air and press an attack button. Crouching attacks. Use an attack you do while crouching. Uh, they'll probably tell you about magic series. Just basically, there's there are links in this game, but they're not like the most. Like they're not like the focus of the game. Unlike Street Fighter or something. Okay, you're just dashing. You can dash like in Marvel 2 and 3 by pressing two punches or just double tapping forward. Double tapping forward. Yeah, yeah, double tapping back. And I can just press two buttons, back to buttons. They actually made this, so this is more forgivable, so... You know, that works. Then you're in the air, double... Double jump, you gotta tap again. This is a good time to test this, I'm not entirely sure. In a game like Melty Blood, if you're holding a direction and you go press up like that in the... Like, if you jump and then try to double jump like that while still holding the direction, it doesn't work. You need to let go and press it again. I'm not entirely sure. Remember how this works in this game? One. Oh, you can just tap. So this game is easier too. It's way easier to double jump. Super jump is just down up. You jump way higher. You can control where if you go forward or backwards. You know, same as any other jump. It just goes higher. Special and blockbuster attacks. Okay. So you need a little practice on this. I know it's a meme that Smash players don't shower because you need to do a quarter circle motion to <laughs> turn on the shower. But, you know, it's just practice. It's easy. They're easier than it seems. Pretty easy in Hurtbox 2. Hurtbox? 
hitbox stickless i don't like calling it hitbox because that's the brand and they're actually kind of evil and there are some of these the dragon punch attack that z motion you see down there a lot of people have trouble with it just do forward and a fireball motion next you'll get it it's that easy don't try to do it perfectly just forward fireball motion you did it yeah i hit you because it's asking me to oh my bad you know just different just telling you that different uh, buttons with the same special move have different properties, that's fine. Dramatic Tension, that's just your bar. I give you five bars right here. Blockbuster attacks, those are just supers. Most of them are simply quarter circle forward or back and two buttons. I think it's universal that all level threes are quarter circle back and two punches. So... You know, it's just the same as any other one, just press two buttons at the same time instead of one. Easy, right? Next lesson is team dynamics. Okay, so since you can use teams in this game, you can tag from others. And medium, basically the medium buttons and the heavy buttons. And there you go, you changed. To call assist is kind of weird. Maybe this is where you're having trouble. Like, light punch and medium kick at the same time and pressing them right now, they're kinda... Kinda weird, right? Kinda weird thing to press. But, or macro 1. Go to your settings, I might add this into your settings, and you can change what your macro does, and you can put their macro stand. So, you can just call an assist with, look, I'm just pressing a single button, and it's my macro. Calling an assist, I already have the other one set for that too. Easy, right? Outtakes. This is a snapback if you've played uh, Dragon Ball Fighters or Marvel. It's a snapback. Which is the same button, well, the same two buttons as a tag, but with a quarter circle. So if you use the medium ones, you'll get the medium character, and if you do the heavy ones, you get the character that's last. There you go. And now with Peacock, you can choose. Easy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you do that, they also lose the assist character that comes in, loses the red health. So it's pretty good if they have a lot of red health, you punch them a lot, and you don't want them to recover that red health. Snap them back. Now they're in point. They lost all that red health. Okay, chapter 2. Defending against mix-ups. This is probably where most people get stuck. What a mix-up is, is basically changing where you have to block so it's harder for you to defend against it. You can't block forever. High lows, there's a lot of attacks here. Basically means that overhead into low, it's sort of a mix-up. But if it's from a jump-in, it's just kind of uh, second nature for fighting game players to block low after an overhead. So jumping into an overhead is a good mix-up. Catches a lot of people. Like just down back here and if you see her jump stop down backing it's that easy just down back if you see her jump that's when you block easy right jump block high just keep down backing. If she jumps, you block high. It was that easy. Do you see that? Do you see her jump? Stop crouching. And you'll do it. This is probably where most people get stuck. Because if you're new to fighting games, it's what she's doing. It's kind of she's doing a lot. And it might like confuse you. But it's that simple. Like simple mix-ups like that, just hold down back, and if she jumps, stop crouching and just hold back. And you did it. That simple. Punishing. Punishing is important in this game. Uh, the, the training room actually has 
uh, dynamic frame data. You can see the frame data on everything. It's good to have that turned off. On, I mean, on safe attacks, it means you can punish them. That's punishable. Usually all... It's not the same for everyone. But most of all heavy buttons are punishable. There you go. Maybe you just get stuck here. There you go. She, I didn't. Ah, I guess I did punish. That's not punishable. So just do the same as before, and wait for the sweep. Once she sweeps, you can punish her. Same as before. Just hold down back. She jumps. Don't just hold back, not down. And after a sweep, you can punish. Most heavy buttons again are punishable. And most punishes are easy with just a well all punishes are easier with a light button. So that's what I did. Easy. Just wait for the sweep. That kick she does at the end of the sliding kick, and you will be able to punish it. Hit confirm. Hit confirms are basically what Philia was doing before. Like, she poked a little bit, went into the medium kick, and since she saw it didn't hit, she didn't go into the unsafe button. Simple as that. So, I go... Okay, hit crouching... Oh, just wants me to hit crouching. Okay, easy. And since medium kick is a multi-hit button, crouching medium kick, you have all that time to hit confirm. I didn't hit, I didn't do it. Didn't hit, I didn't go into crouching heavy kick. Hit. That simple. It's... Takes so long, as you can see. You can take all the time you want to see if you hit confirm. Did you see that? It's easy. Just wait. You don't have to guess or anything. The crouching medium kick last for so long you can simply see if it hit or not very easy so learn mix-ups of your own basically i'm pretty sure it's just gonna be a hit crouching light kick after a jumping heavy punch there you go but then again it's a super simple mix-up most fighting game players instinctively block low after a jump in because of that Back heavy kick is an overhead attack, as you can see. There you go. You see she was crouching, but she got the hit. Hopeful. That one is actually hard to block, especially if you're new. Even if you're not new, her mix-ups are pretty scary. Parcel is hard to block. But, as of now, they haven't asked you to do that. Oh. Uh. Look. It's already telling you what to do. That's what it's telling you to do. Jumping HP, crouching light kick, medium kick, crouching medium kick actually, and then heavy kick, the overhead. You can just do this though. Like, you see that? <laughs> just overhead into overhead or overhead low overhead. Not do the second low it's asking you to. Oh, crowd, it's asking, it's another hit confirm. Let's do this again. Play again. It's asking you to react to hit confirm into the... Into the mix-up. So if you hit, go for the medium, the heavy kick, like the sweep. But if it doesn't hit, go for the overhead. I messed up. This one's actually more difficult. You don't have as much time as before, but with a little practice, it's easy. Oh, it's asking me first to do that. Oh, chain, chain, okay. There we go. It's fine. And now let's try this. She blocks. She didn't block. She blocks. Go for the overhead. This one requires a little practice. You might get stuck here for a while. This is not an easy head confirm. I'm good at this game. Don't get discouraged. 
you might stay there for like half an hour, but you'll get it. Once you get it, your hit confirms. It's good practice. That's good practice to learn how to hit confirm because that's very important in this game. You can't just throw around things willy-nilly. Okay, so throws in this game are like, they give you a 12 frame window to tech, I'm pretty sure. 12 frames is a lot of time to tech a throw. You can actually react to it. It's not like in Street Fighter where you have to basically preemptively know they're gonna try to... to... whatchamacallit? To throw you. Like, if you keep your fingers on this, I'm pressing the... I'm pressing the buttons. But you don't have to press them, but if you keep them on that, on defense, might be easier to be like, oh, grab, and then you tech it. It's just asking you to grab three times, forward, and then you grab backwards, just grab, hold back, and the grab, easy. Poke and throw, also known as a tick throw, which is basically... There you go. It's a little timing, timing's a little weird with Cerebella, but it's fine, it's a take throw, just... This is basically linking, like in Street Fighter, but on block. But it's fine, other characters have it easier because they can actually chain their light punch twice in a row, no problem. Again, throw breaking. I'm trying to do it as late as possible to show you. It's not that late, but you can do it pretty late. There you go. I think I missed like two frames of that. Again, uh, too late. But you can... You don't have to do it at the same time, as you can see. It's actually not that hard to react once you're used to it and you're expecting it. But don't expect to just do it. And once again, if... Oh, it, this is actually difficult. You cannot crouch tag in this game. You need... If you're holding down any shape or form, you won't be able to tag your throw. Again, uh, they're doing it Street Fighter style. Like, it's actually easy, a couple of them are actually hard, but just go at it and she'll do the easy ones, she'll be able to do it. Just remember that you cannot crouch attack in this game, you need to just be holding back, if you're holding down the attack won't come out. Chapter 3, basic chains, magic series, light heavy, light medium heavy, simple as that. Some characters have specific ones, like Parasol here. Basically, it told you that she can repeat her heavy punch twice. Not all characters have that. Test it out with the character you like to play. Simple as that. Most characters can go from light, medium to heavy. Simple as that. Some can even go through the entire buttons. Like light punch, light kick, medium punch, medium kick, heavy punch, heavy kick. But Parasol is not one of them. She can only go forward. She cannot repeat a light. Like, if she does a light kick, she cannot do a light punch, is what I mean. But if she goes light kick, medium punch, that's fine. She just can't repeat strength. Except if the most of her buttons, like, have two hits. Just this two don't. But you can't repeat them. So it's light, medium, heavy. Easy. Pop quiz combos, I don't know what that means. Okay, l like this is why I was telling you. Two, two, two. I messed up. But that's fine because this is not hard. They're probably... So, just test out what magic series your character has. Simple as that. Advanced chains, basically. Here you go. Philia can do exactly what I told you. Light punch, light kick, medium punch, medium kick, and then a heavy. She cannot repeat heavies though. But like two, and then the light, she can. But the light is not repeatable. I think the only repeatable one she has is light punch. So light, light, medium, medium. Oh, I, it's supposed to be kick. Light, light, medium. Light, light, medium, medium, heavy. Easy. 
You can also do it crouching, as I was doing before. Easy. Again, it's doing light, light, medium, medium, heavy. But it's ending with two crouchers, which you can do. You can just start crouching in any time in your magic series. So light, light, medium, and then crouch. Simple. Just begin crouch, just hold crouch after medium punch. It might take you, this one might also take you a while. This is not easy to do. Like, I'm good at this game, but if I move to another game and I try to do this right off the bat, it's gonna take me a couple of tries. It's gonna take me a little while. Because I'm not used to the feeling of this game, the characters and everything. So don't get discouraged if you can't do it this fast. The first time I did it, it took a while to get my hands coordinated. So after one button, I would hold down and press the other two buttons. It's not as easy as it seems. But you will be able to get there. It'll take you like 10 minutes at most, I would think. But don't give up. Don't get discouraged. It's fine. Normals can cancel into specials basically and that also i don't know if that tutorial told you but that also applies for whiffs a whiff normal can cancel into a special like that well that all can also be done on hit or on block simple you can cancel a whiff normal into super a hit normal Again, or a block normal into super, no problem. And you can cancel a uh, with normal into special into super. Same as in block, same as in. Same as on hit. Like. And there you go. So be careful with someone's whiffing because they might mash a super and hit you for trying to punish a whiff. It's not that easy to punish with moderns in this game. And now it's telling you that you can cancel specials like I told you. Simple, right? Again, two fireball motions that quick in succession. It's not that easy to do. I know what I'm doing in this game. Don't get discouraged. Uh, even in the new games, it's hard for me to do with confirms like that because I'm not used to how the game feels and now it's asking you to do the same as you've been doing just stick it all together like punch like kick medium kick like punch like kick medium kick Oop. and Gregor Samson there you go it's that simple you might get stuck because you don't know what Gregor Samson is and it's not telling you but it's a super you've been doing they really should have put the... I'm not entirely sure if you can actually change it so you see what you can... Ch well, you can see your command list. But you should have just put in there. Air chains. You basically... Everything you've been doing on the ground, you can do it in the air. Philia standing heavy punches her launcher. This is one of the... If not the only, I'm not entirely sure. But this launcher is actually safe. Safe on block. So don't try to punish this. Well... They're, they're still super minus, but not punishable, so you can take your turn back, maybe. They might mash into a super as you try to do that. But just jump forward and heavy punch again. Once again, light punch, light kick, heavy kick. So, light punch, light kick, heavy kick. You did it. Same as in the ground, but now in the air. Now the same. And again, in the air, like... Whiff into cancel, whiff into cancel, into cancel, and you can do the same on block or on hit. You can cancel normals into specials, normals into supers, and specials into supers. That simple. That used to be one of her combo starters back when the game was way different. So, light, light, medium, heavy. It's asking you to do that. And then jump forward, light, medium, heavy that you can practice this in chunks like i'm doing like light light medium heavy okay now you have that down maybe you start practicing that and of course after air ball heavy kick you have to do the super or circle back to kicks 
So once you've practiced both parts, you can simply stitch them together. And you did it. Again, this is an actual combo. It might take you a little while to do it. Simple combos are hard to do in a new game. Just don't, don't lose your patience. And we'll do it. Defensive techniques. I think it's talking about... Press two P buttons. Okay, it's a push block. It's a push block. People don't know how to push block. Once again, she's gonna mix you up. Just hold down back. And if she jumps, just hold back. And if you see a block, just press two punches at the same time. You'll push them away. You don't know how many people I am actually. I just take them to the corner and start pressing light kick, light kick, light kick, light kick, jump light kick, light kick, light kick. R rinse and repeat all over again until they die because they don't know how to push block. That's This is what push blocking is. Uh, this is you. You have to hold the button, you ha can hold it. After you get hit, hold it. After you hit the ground, hold it. You don't have to mash. You'll hit the ground once and then you hold it. The thing about this is that the pink bounce is an actual OTG opportunity which you cannot tank. The blue bounce is the one you can tank. But just hold the button while uh, when you see the pink bounce and you'll be able to tank no problem you can mash but you know it's not might be easier to mash but if you mash too much you might mash out of your recovery well you might mash right after you recover and they might meet you hit you immediately and punish you for it so just holding it after that seems fine these are mostly new So jump-ins, you know, it's just regular jumping. And you did it, just regular jumper. A stagger is a state where usually in this game for you, a move that has a stagger property needs to hit as a new string. Let me tell you what I mean. Like, I'm gonna do a magic series, light, medium, heavy. And this one, standing medium punch is a stagger but if I do it in this string light medium it doesn't do it because you need to start a new string with it even if it's in the same combo like let's do let's do like that's two because it's a new string if you launch the next thing counts as a new string. If you jump in, when you're on the ground, it counts as a new string. So, basically, you can grab combo people from staggers with grabs, just like that. That's what it's teaching you. Off the ground hits, as I already told you, uh, the pink purple bounce is your opportunity. They cannot tech that. You can OTG from the blue bounce if they don't tack, but the, they can tack all the time and it has invincibility. So... There you go. That's a knockdown to the ground. As you can see, there is a pink bounce right there. Which you can do crouching, standing, standing. It's what it's telling you. Crouching light, medium, heavy. So let's stitch them up together. I messed it up. Again, you probably will mess this up. It's not as simple as it seems. But don't get discouraged because once you get the hang of it, it will become second nature to you. So jumping, medium. And this has a link in there, as you saw, an off the ground thing. So if, so it's pretty good you can see to mix up a cerebella because you can combo off of a command grab so let's just do the combo it's asking you us to do oh it's slight it's medium kick it's medium kick i'm sorry the computer actually does not tack the blue bounce probably to make it easier on us look i'm being this is 
If you wanted to do it, make it easier on yourself, put her in the corner. But as you can see, it's not the easiest thing to do. I don't play Bella and I was messing it up. You, that actually works mid screen, but it's better to go for the launcher and the actual good combos, you know, as I did. But whatever, let's go canceling into air dashes. You can cancel normals into air dashes if your character has an air dash. You cannot do that with specials, no. Annie, it might seem that you're doing it, but you're actually just waiting for her dive kick to recover and then you can air dash. You cannot cancel it. So let's just do it again. Asking you to do this and then air dash. Light, heavy kick. So let's do it. You can, in this part, I don't, when I'm doing combos, I don't dash with buttons. When I'm instant air dashing, I dash with buttons. But in combos like this, I press forward twice. Now, I just do it the way you're more, most comfortable with. This is how I'm most comfortable with. So, and again, as you saw, same as before, just stitch it together. It's not that hard. Blockbuster sequels, also known as Delayed Hyper Combo, DHC from Marvel. I don't know why it's named like that. But basically, if you have two bars, you can do a super, and if you input the character right behind you, right now it's Bella, you input her super, any of her supers, as failure super is going on, you get to the HC. Anytime. As long as it's active, you can DHC anytime. You cannot DHC recovery though. Recovery is punishable. As you can see, easy. You can do it when you hit her, you can do it when she blocks, you can do it on whiff like that. Some DHCs are safe because they're like the hatred install from Pain Wheel, so you can do that from full screen with a super into hatred install if you really want to get your character out of there or something. Just an idea I can give you. Infinite combos. Basically, you cannot repeat the same normals or specials. You can do supers, so you can repeat as much supers as you want, but you'll run out of bar, of course. But you cannot repeat uh, the same... You cannot start new strings with the same normals or specials. I will link the right now to a video where I explain how this infinite system works because it doesn't really give you that good of an impression here. Once you're glowing pink, you can press any button and you'll burst. If your burst hits anything, you're safe. Even if they block it. If it's green, it's because your dizzy bar went full and you can't continue your combo there. Again, I have a video that should be linked right now in the top right so you can actually go see how this system works in a more simplified manner because the game doesn't do a good job in explaining it and it's actually a little complicated to the point where i don't know how it works in its entirety but as long as you know the simpleness uh, the simple explanation that i give you should be fine and combo stages this is what i'm talking about there are two systems using Scholar's Infinite Prevention System, IPS, or the Drum Engage, which is the Undizzy, the green gauge that is below your health bar. Five stages, 20 combo in Skull Girl. Stage 1 consists of any attack used when first jumping in on the opponent. Stage 2 consists of the first chain of attacks in a combo when started on the ground or following the initial jump in attacks. This can be the first chain once you land, or the chain in me there, cancelling with an air dash. So once you air dash, uh, IPS kicks in. Or once you, or if you start hitting on the ground, IPS kicks in. So just trying to make you a simple combo, like this. Oh, crouching heavy punch, okay. Stage 1 and 2 are not tracked by the infinite prevention system. Yeah, it's your, it's a free string that you get. Again, or click on the top right if you want a better explanation. And attacks on during these stages do not add drama. First strings don't add on Dizzy. 
Combos can begin with throws and automatically advance you to step two. Yeah. Stage three is when everything starts counting. The start combo is typically the first chain of an attack in a melee after you've launched the opponent and jump to continue the combo. Stage three is where the infinite prevention system begins tracking the attacks you've used in each chain. It's also the point from which all attacks start to add drama to your opponent's drama gauge. Once again, top right in the video you should be able to see I messed up. Oh, it's light kick. I'm sorry. You should be able to go to a place to a video of mine that explains it a little better. Stage four is the next chain of attacks in me there, following stage three before you land. Just like in stage three, attacks you've used in stage four are tracked and each have a certain amount of drama. Once again, there it's a lot of words, a lot of lingo. And it's okay if you don't understand it. Again, I don't truly understand the system as well as you might think I do. Let's go watch that video. It's, it will explain to you in better terms, with examples, with combos and stuff. Explain to you how everything is working. And it'll be easier for you to build combos like that. Once you land after stage 3 or stage 4, if you start a new, stay, a new chain of stage 3 and are still on the ground, you will be in stage 5. Stage 5 is the last combo stage. <laughs> Except if you're Beowulf. Any attacks used in stage 5 will also be tracked and add drama like stages 3 and 4. But now starting a new chain of attacks with one you've already used will trigger the infinite prevention system. That was a lot. It was and it's okay. Again, top right. Let's try out a combo that takes all the way to stage. Okay. So, jumping. Oh, you're supposed to do a heavy punch. Stage 5. Stage 5 is important because it's the first point in which the infinite prevention system, IPS, can be triggered. IPS is triggered. When you start a new chain of attacks in stage 5 with an attack you've already used in your combo from stage 3 or later, which means that IPS can't be triggered in the middle of a chain. Again, it's a lot of words, complicated. I do not, it's a very complicated system. It probably needs a better tutorial, but again, I have a video on it more about the infinite prevention system because it's so difficult and now it's just telling you to do combos it's telling you oh that triggered ips see that when you hit jumping light kick it triggered ips because you already used it once in stage three even though it kind of told you that if it the infinite the IPS will trigger at stage 5 it kind of might lead you to believe that it's not how it works and I'm gonna try to have the, fun, the freaking video there top uh, the top right of the video because it's complicated standing attacks and crouching attacks are counted as the same very important crouching and standing are the same air attacks and ground attacks separate okay that's very important that's why you're able to start a chain with light kick on the ground in stage 5 without triggering IPS. What's the big deal about triggering IPS? It's, you know, they break the combo, combo breaker, whatever. Using light punch and use jumping light punch, light kick, instead of light kick, light punch. And then we do this again. You continue the combo because you didn't use light kick. Notice how the last attack hit the opponent normally without triggering IPS. Okay, and you change an attack that you hadn't used in the combo yet. This overall concept can be summed up simply from stage five, don't start a chain with an attack you've already hit with in stage three or later, which basically means stage just, <laughs> you know, it's complicated, video is gonna be there. And Infinity Breaker isn't always a guaranteed way to escape though. You can actually avoid it, which is a burst bait. So let's do this once again. It's asking to do this. Oh, I didn't. I didn't press it at the right time. Let's try it again. There you go. And you can punish that. 
You know this means you break your effect once blue instead of gold? The effect, the blue effect indicates that the opponent is vulnerable to attack. Once you know the various ways to avoid triggering IPS, you can learn to trigger on purpose to bait your opponent. Uh, yeah, you can bait your opponent, it's punishable. If you block the burst, though, it's not punishable. If the burst hits an assist, it's not punishable. If you trigger burst with a projectile, it will never be punishable. However, that your opponent can choose when to use the infinity, yeah, the, the infinity breaker. They can choose when to do it. So they can wait a little bit so you're getting close and then they burst. Man, this tutorial is long. Drama gauge, it's the Undizzy. Everyone calls it the Undizzy. It's that little tiny mar below the health mar. The drama gauge doesn't begin to fill up until stage 3 of your combo assesses the sound. So it's. Uh... Didn't fill up. Did not fill up. They did not fill up. The jump in and first string are always free. Unless you air dash cancel. But this, there you go, little green bar. Filled up a little bit. That's what that means. And heavy buttons uh, fill it up more. And light buttons fill it up less. And medium are in between, of course. And there you go. Simple. Notice all of your attacks in the air cause the drama gauge to increase, but crouching heavy punch does not. That's because you're still in combo stage 2. Once in combo stage 3, light attacks increase drama gauge by 15, medium attacks by 20, and heavy attacks by 30. If you want to uh, super optimize, this is important, but if you don't, it's fine if you don't know this. As long as you know that the most are <laughs> heavy and the least are light. Special attacks will always increase it by 20, no matter what strength they are. Blockbusters do not do it at all. That's important. Blockbusters do not uh, trigger the Undizzy, and you can they do not trigger IPS. You can do them as long as you have bar. Full wind reaches to 40. It can go above this value, but won't start draining until the opponent is no longer in headstone or blockstone. Pass to 40 and allow the opponent to use an infinity breaker. Play close attention to the hits events that aren't great. Okay, just a little bit. They may tell you, I'm not entirely sure. But there's people that tell me, like, why is it not triggering on Dizzy? It's full. That's because if the last string of your combo starts just before you fill the Undizzy, you can finish that string and it won't trigger on Dizzy. Okay? Okay, let's do this. <laughs> okay, I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm making my best to do this combo. This is a hard combo, which is not nice that they force you to not do it. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this, actually. That they automatically do that. It's not nice, but whatever. And then it's that into and that okay let's try it why did they use a character of a sword to do this combo in a lightweight i don't know messed up Again, why did they choose a character who is... I missed the combo there, but since I triggered IPS anyways, it should be fine, but whatever. Damn. Okay, I did it. I forgot that. It doesn't wait to tell it, it waits to tell you if you were doing it right. I forgot that. Trigger 
triggered IPS. There we go. IPS, no, it triggered on Disney. Thus, it demonstrates the drama system is in action because it is the first attack in a new chain, a new string, as I told you in your combo, after the drama gauge has reached 240. But there's no reason that the last attack is important. At that point in that combo, it would not have triggered the infinite prevention system. Drama works in tandem with the infinite prevention system to limit how long a combo can go before the opponent can try to escape with an infinity breaker, unless you're Beowulf. While IPS protects against combos that are repeating patterns, Drama helps prevent combos from becoming too long before IPS 7 triggers. If you start a combo with an attack that counter hits, it'll actually lower the drama gauge below zero. That's why my combo videos have counter hit combos. This means that you can do an even longer combo because it takes longer to reach the normal limit of 240. The same combo before and you'll see. This time with the counter hit and it won't trigger. My B. And trigger because it was a counter hit combo see how the final jumping LK hits normally that's because the attack you started the combo with was a counter hit starting with a counter hit lowers drama gauge by 25 for a light attack 50 for a medium attack and 100 for a heavy attack that's why some of my combo videos have light medium and heavy counter starters if you want to maximize your damage, try to punish your opponent's mistakes with a heavy attack. Don't worry about that if you're starting. Just punish with a light attack and do your BMB. Everything else comes later. The drama gauge will decrease over time when the opponent is not in hit stun or block stun. Do the simple combo and watch your gauge go down when they recover. There you go. Having drama increases only when not in decrease. Having drama decrease only when not in headstone or blockstone doesn't work in your favor when you're the attacker. If the opponent has drama left over when you land a new combo, you'll be more limited in how much damage you can deal. That's true. If they have some bar, you won't be able to do your full BMB. When you're the defender, this works in your favor. It means it's more difficult for your opponent to land the finishing blow. Learn to keep an eye on the drama gauge so you'll know when your character opponent will be able to use an infinity breaker and how best to maximize your damage output of your combos. This system makes the game really fun to fly by the seat of your pants, improvise combos and so on, but you don't have to worry about that if you're starting. Just do your BMB and if you trigger it, then you'll basically naturally start looking at it and start learning how to end the combo before you hit the on dizzy you'll naturally be able to do that because you're playing the game and you realize that it triggers you know you don't have to practice that like super rigorously in training mode if you're just starting I'm here telling you as someone that wants to play the game I'm considering you as someone that wants to play the game not necessarily win Evo you know Stunt doubles, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's an alpha counter. Alpha counters are called stunt doubles in this game. Not many people use them, some characters have it better than others, like... Ah, uh, Big Man is probably the best one. Big Man's DP one is probably the best one. Basically, while well in Blockstone, if you hold forward and press... Uh, one of your tag, two tag buttons really quickly, medium, medium, or heavy, heavy. You will do your assist. Uh, your assist will come out and change characters, basically. If you have a DP assist, an invincible reversal assist, it's pretty good, especially with Big Man. Because Big Man can combo after his DP, his fully invincible DP. So, you can just do that and punish your opponent for going on the offense. On the offensive, it's kind of messed up <laughs> that Big Ben has such a good one, but whatever. It can also be performed during an Infinity Breaker. This is, this was actually a glitch. Did you see that? You burst, and during your burst, you can do the Alpha Counter. You can do this, so if you get like, if you're not sure, or if you're sure. But anyways, if you're like, the opponent might 
try to burst bait me and punish me so I will just burst and alpha counter out of there you can do that this was actually a glitch at the start but it added such a good thing to the game that they just added it they just made it official pvgc i also have a video on pvgc's i'll put it up there top right if you want to see it as you likely know by now directly after blocking attack you can press two punches to perform a reaction shot that push block it's commonly referred to as a push block thank you you perform a push block, your character always goes through their entire push block animation. However, once that animation is finished, you are immediately free to move even if there was supposed to be more blocks on remaining. This is something that was added from Marvel vs. Capcom 2. This window of opportunity you create upon recovering from a push block allows you to do any attack you choose, regardless of whether you would normally be unable to retaliate. After a attacking after a push block, in this way, it's called a push block card, guard cancel or PVGC. If you use a PVGC to attack, be it a throw, special, a blockbuster, or even switch team members, your character will momentarily flash green. Pretty sure they added that the, your character flashes green when you're supposed to finish your input. Hold jump. Okay. There we go. You know what? We were about like same. What if I... That's punishable now. If you push block and they do that, the Luger, you push block immediately and they still go for that uh, last shot, it's punishable. See how you're able to jump earlier than the opponent that time? That's because you did a push block guard cancel. Now block the opponent's attack, then push block and perform Bangtan's EKG flatliner blockbuster when push block animation ends. I guess they didn't add it. She flashes green if you do it. And I just mash it as you see. You can just kind of mash it. Eventually you'll become better at it. Though push lock animations are the same length, if additional attacks make contact in the animation, it will take longer to recover. Highly recommended that you become familiar with your character's push block animation because it lets you time your execution using the con a consistent visual cue. During the beta, I'm not sure if it's still in the beta right now, but they added, I might edit it in, that it would flash, your character would flash green when you're supposed to do it anyways. And they will flash a bigger green, like a stronger green, if you PVGC it. So note that your attack will only flash green if recovering from push block actually cuts off any block stun. Simply push blocking a uh, light punch and attacking after ones will not count as a PVGC. And are we done? One last double snap. Basically infinite combos, you're gonna hold over from our vs Capcom 2. If you uh, snap back and assist with the point character close enough to the corner, the assist character will stay there and you can infinite them. Basically, that's, that's what it is. Oh, I messed up. As this character stays and you can infinite them. You can infinite them. Everything doesn't matter anymore. Nothing you learn matters once you do that. You can actually infinite assists like that and kill them for a bad assist call. This is probably one of the easiest ones. If you want to have a better time, you can add the light punch. There's a lot more. You don't really need like the super optimized ones unless you're a super top player. As long as you have a simple one that kills the opponent fairly quickly, you're doing well. You can do infinites. So it basically makes the opponent, makes people not want to just be spamming assists that you can punish them. And that's it. Let me know if you learned anything. Let me know if this helped you. Let me know if you're having trouble in the comments. Maybe there's something specific I didn't say or something else specific that you need help with that it's not in this video that can help you with. Just let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you next time.